Hello out there and welcome to another episode of the Rocker Dog Podcast. The only show that talks to musicians about their dogs and how awesome they are. It's that simple. And I am your host Tim Dill along with my canine companion Charlie and today we're happy to bring you the audio to our Zoom call with Eric D. Johnson. The creative force behind the Fruit Bats and a member of the Grammy nominated trio Bonnie Light Horseman. And this is his Streetwise Rocker Dog. Um, my rocker dog is a 42 pound uh, mixed breed terrier named Pinto. <laughs> and how old is how old is Pinto? We don't know. Um, he's okay. uh, he's approximately 10 ish. Um, maybe a little. He's he's starting to show signs of maybe being a little bit older than that too. Um, the last year, or so we're like he's anywhere between nine and 13 or something like that, but. Okay. When we got him nine years ago, he was actually, yeah, he would be, he's estimated at 11 because uh, nine years ago, he was said to be two years old. So, okay. So it's funny. That's, you got him nine years ago because I was trying to trace it back through your Instagram and I couldn't find the actual post. If, if there isn't even is a post that says, Hey, you know, this is our new dog or this is Pinto, a, an introduction post. So I was curious. So when you did actually get him, now, what's his story? He's a he's a rescue, right? Yeah, he's a rescue. He's a uh, was a street dog in Mexico, uh, in Baja, in a town called, oh. uh, called Loreto, which is like um Loreto's like um I've not been there, but it's on the Gulf Coast side of uh, of the Baja Peninsula, um, and it's I think kind of a, a little touristy, but not super, not as touristy as like, uh, you know, like Cabo or something, but it's, um, yeah. uh, and I think it has a little bit of like an artsy expat aspect to it. And, and like, you know, like many towns down there, lots of street dogs. So, mm -hmm. um, there was a, I think there's a, uh, a guy that lives down there that, um, rescues street dogs from Loretto and then sends them to Oregon or Washington, which is a, those are both no kill states. So um, it's basically a dog that's kind of guaranteed to like live, right. don't go to like some kind of thing. And then they end up having to go to a kill shelter or something. So um, yeah. No, oh, that's, an, I wasn't aware of that, that we had actual no kill states. That's, that's very cool. Yeah. And I might have to like, I might have to, that's, and, and hopefully I'm right about that. That's, that, that is my understanding at least, especially <laughs> at, at that Oregon is a no kill state. So yeah, I can, I can see that. Yeah. And what's your history with, with pets or dogs? Did you have dogs growing up? Pinto is my first and thus far only dog. So, and we, okay. I, grew, I grew up in like apartments and stuff. So, and moved around a lot. So in my family are not dog people. My, my folks were not dog people. So yeah. And I, <clears throat> I always liked dogs. It was a little bit of like a cat. I thought I was a cat person for a long time. Um, but I always got along with dogs, had dog friends, but sort of considered myself a little bit more on the cat side of things. And I, and I have, I have swung fiercely over to, and I like cats still too, but I'm now I'm, I'm both. And, and probably I would say a dog person if, if I had to choose. Okay. I, I was going to ask you that because I noticed, again, going through your Instagram, it seemed around maybe 2014, there was a lot of cat posts and, and very little dog posts. Yeah. Um, there's also a picture of you with, and it's an old photo, so the photo is not of good quality, but I'm taking it was a stuffed animal, but it was, you called it Snuffy. Yeah. It was you and Snuffy. That was a stuffed animal? Yeah, that was Snuffleupagus from uh, okay. Sesame okay. Street. Yeah. Okay. Because I couldn't make it out. I'm like, is that his first dog? But yeah. obviously you're, you're mentioning yeah. that, you know, you didn't grow up with dogs. You know, in looking at some of the articles you've, you've participated in, there's one in uh, TalkHouse.com back in June of 2019, where you list three great things. And one was being Bloody Marys, two was being Jaws, the movie. And three was being Pinto. And what was funny about it is the amount of ink each one got. The Bloody Mary was, was two paragraphs. Uh -huh. Jaws was one paragraph. And Pinto was six paragraphs. <laughs> I don't remember that, but that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a couple of good quotes I took out of that. One, and this is, you, you were just mentioning about being a dog guy, was you were saying, I'm getting, I'm getting my mind blown by being a dog guy. Yeah. So I'm curious to how that evolved. Like what? You know, when the dog first came into your life, as you're saying, you were kind of a cat person or an animal person. What kind of changed or what what caused the change? 
you know, it's just the thing about having a dog, which is like that they, they they're definitely your familiar in a in a, in a different way than a, a cat is, and just the the interactivity and like sort of learning a little bit about dogs and how they are man's best friend, and that's actually true, and that our um our language and uh, like as far as interspecies relationship go like our language and our culture is very similar to theirs um especially like the domesticated dog it's mind-blowing that a domesticated dog like pinto is uh really just chromosomally a timber wolf still which is or a it's even weirder when a chihuahua uh you realize is is chromosomally a a timber wolf so yeah i sort of like the science of dogs is really interesting too and and like the history like uh yeah i sort of just like i nerded out on dogs but pinto is um also and a lot of people love Pinto online and stuff, but if you know him too, he's sort of all dogs to all people. And he's also, if you're a dog person, you're going to really like him. And if you don't like dogs, you actually might really like him too. Like he, he okay. wins people over. He's um super quiet. We thought that maybe he was deaf at first when we got him because he didn't bark for like, uh, the first like month or something we got him and then there was a raccoon in the backyard and he did one bark um, <laughs> so he doesn't really bark at all he doesn't do he's got really good boundaries he's very affectionate but he doesn't like jump up really he's not like all up in your grill he has a sort of a cat-like personality in some ways but still with the the friendliness of a dog so he he was he's if, if uh as my entry level dog he's he's a, a really good one you know Mm-hmm. Now, I read that your your wife got him not checking in with you. Like she said, yeah. oh, by the way, I got a dog. Yeah. And your first reaction was kind of, I don't know if it was anger, but like it was almost like, why? You know, well, it, was, and, it was two things. It was a not anger, but like a little bit like, whoa, like our life is about to change, you know, um, but also I, I it was weird. I was flying to the East Coast when it happened. And I had a vision in my head, this was before I even knew about this, that was the word Pinto and the name Pinto for a dog, even where I was like, mm-hmm. if we ever get a dog, we should name him Pinto. And then when I landed, my wife texted a picture and was like, she said, meet your new dog, not kidding. Um, and uh, <laughs> and I was like, not mad, but a little bit like, wait, what? Like, this is <laughs> like, we hadn't planned it, you know? So yeah. Um, but, and then I was like, maybe a little testy, but then I was like, okay, but also his name is Pinto because I weirdly like had a vision of this today. So, right. And that, that felt right. Like I, I was, it, it tempered by whatever consternation I was having about it. Right. Did he have a kennel given name for being at the rescue first? He was first named Furules in Mexico, um, which I don't okay. know the pronounce. I might be pronouncing that wrong, but Furules is a very famous cartoon dog in Mexico. He's like the Snoopy of Mexico, okay. uh, like in comic strip. And uh, mm-hmm. he, cause Pinto looks like a, he looks like the platonic ideal of a dog. Like if you looked up just dog in the dictionary right. or something, or like a cart, he looks like a cartoon dog. Like he's medium size, not small, not big, just sort of like a doggy looking face and a little beard. And yeah, he, <laughs> so he looks like that cartoon dog, which, so I think he got that name at the, uh, rescue place in Baja. And then when he came up to Oregon, they couldn't pronounce that. So then they were calling him Frito. And then that's cute. Yeah. And then he became Pinto because of my vision. But also he he's named after a Pinto horse, not a Pinto uh, bean. Right, right. Yeah. So is he uh, is he fleet footed as a Pinto horse? He used to be he's not 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 as much. He's an older, older fellow now, but he, he once was quite uh, fleet footed. Yes. <laughs> a really good jumper that was always his uh, that's his was his talent when he was a younger fellow could jump could clear a five foot fence you know like that now i'm always curious if you're a, a pet an artist pet becomes its muse and there was a commenter who said you should do a whole lp about pinto like paul mccartney did with jet and you replied i've considered this and i was wondering is that true have you considered that or have you ever tried to write something inspired by so. I have, and there's like, um, there's a lot of great songs about to beyond Jet too, because there's Martha, my dear. I don't know if people have talked about this on the pod, but Martha, my dear. Mm-hmm. There should be a playlist at some point about songs about people's dogs, and then, um, you know, the Led Zeppelin song "Braun Your Stomp." Uh, it's from Led Zeppelin Three, 
I love that. Okay. Song. Big song for me. That's about uh, Robert Plant's dog. Um, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. And it, and if you listen to it, it is, it's just kind of like about him walking around, around the Welsh countryside with his uh, blue eyed, he sings ain't, ain't no companion like a blue eyed Merle. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So like, that's a great just theme for songs. So yeah, I need, I need to at some point, but I, it's, I still, I still haven't quite, I've tried a couple of times, but it's tricky. Yeah. You don't want it to be silly either. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, admittedly, even when I asked that question, I, I don't see how it could happen without being somewhat maybe very abstract, yeah. at least exactly. lyrically and yeah. story-wise. Yeah. But yeah, easier said than done. Yeah. Um, what about Dog Friends? I see he's got a friend named Junie or Junebug. Yeah, that's um, our friend Johanna Samuels, who's also a great singer-songwriter. You should have her on here, actually. June is, is, is close buds with Pinto. Pinto might be having a play date today with a dog named Snacks. Um, he's he, he <laughs> likes other dogs. He likes um he doesn't like dog parks and he likes dogs that he can kind of hang out with outside and that will greet him and then ignore him. That's his preferred uh, right. with other dogs. He'd probably do well in New York City, just walking the streets, saying hi, and then moving on. He loves a big city vibe. Like he does. He's um. He's not been to New York City, but he, I bet he would really like it. And what about the pit bull in the hot tub? I think it was a pit bull. That's my sister-in-law's dog, who's also okay. a friend of Pinto's, too, and his, who's like a 110-pound pit mix who enjoys going in hot tubs and, uh, <laughs> it, and will sit on your lap in a hot tub. And uh, it, was a, it was a photo op that we couldn't, uh, couldn't say no to. Yeah, it's funny the head on that thing. Those that breed with the heads are so big, those blockheads as they call them. But uh, it sounds like uh, whatever he wants to do, he uh, he does, and he, you don't have a choice. He's very sweet, though. Actually, like the yeah. like he he we let him in there. Like he asks to come in. He doesn't like dive in on top of you <laughs> or anything. But like he really loves that. He's a great dog, actually. A real a very uh, a total gentleman. Um, but it is like. When you play like tug of war or something with him or like with the ball, you're really like, I have to be very cognizant of not getting my hand bitten off. (laughs) Now, speaking of uh, Pinto not going to New York City, I know you travel a lot, you know, a lot of your themes um, that you are, you know, never in one place for long. Do you travel with with Pinto much? Um, I noticed he he recorded with you once out on Stinson Beach or in, outside of San Francisco yeah, one time. Yeah, that. I mean, and that's not. We live in L.A., so it's not too. It's like a you know a seven hour drive or something up there. But like he's been he's been around too. Like he's definitely road tripped around. We were trying to count the number of states he's been in. It's like it's it's a bunch. Like he he's definitely like he's a really good car dog. He's like a baby. He goes to sleep immediately. So, but like. Yeah, and he actually came all the way out to New York with us. We just didn't go into the city, but like he came, we worked on a Bonnie Light Horseman record, um, our last record, out in Woodstock. So he was he was there, um, Woodstock and Kingston, for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Does he fly? He does not fly, no, because he's too big to come into the onto the plane with us, and then he would not want to be like in the cargo hold. It would it would not suit yeah. him. He's he's a He's a sensitive about that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's right. You said forty. For, he's he's weighing in at forty two pounds. I, I that's looks, too big for people think too big for your lap because he looks kind of like a Benji dog a little bit or like almost yeah. like Jack Russell or a Yorkie. And and people's comments when if they've seen him on Instagram a bunch, they are like, oh, he's he's big. Like they're they're surprised at his size. Yeah. What about gigs? Does he ever make a gig? He was at our last Portland show at the Crystal Ballroom backstage, but it's like too loud for him. But he got he got to hang out in the backstage area, and he loves that. He likes to like party with adults. <laughs> um, let's switch to your. I mean, I, I've been referencing it, but your Instagram feed, and I feel like it's become imperative that Pinto is part of your social media plan. You know, where you're always. You'll go, a, you'll go a spell when he's not been posted and you'll be cognizant to say, here's a dog pick and apologize that there hasn't been a dog pick. Yeah. When did all that kind of come to be or evolve? That's a great question. And basically that the answer to that is like, I don't like Instagram very much. Is that, is that what, you know, for all the reasons or whatever. And, and sometimes not for the, sometimes I put it like, sorry, I haven't been on here in a while. And people are like, I get it, man. It's really hard. And I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't think it's hard or like difficult. I just am like, 
I just don't think about it enough. And I feel like, right. so it's more, the Pinto pictures are a way to temper out the like, just me being like, come to my show or what, you know, like right. just using it right. as the kind of like a business website or something like that. So, and uh, I'm not, I am pretty, I wouldn't say I'm impersonal uh, on social media, but I'm not like, uh, I just don't want to like show you my dinner. I don't like yeah. very rarely, yeah. you know, I don't want to like tell you my deep, dark feelings that day or whatever. So I'm like, here's a concert poster. And then just so it's not concert poster after concert poster, here's a picture of my dog because it's, it's a proven thing that people enjoy seeing. Yeah, for sure. And my follow-up question to that is, has it become, it seems like it's become, I don't want to paint it into this picture, but it's become part of your brand, at least on social media. So when you are out on tour and playing, do you have fans approach you and ask about Pinto? All the time. Yeah. He's, he has a, <clears throat> he has definitely like a, a fan base. <laughs> <laughs> are you ever offended? Like, and what about me? What about the show? No, you know? <laughs> no I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> okay. Good. I was going to say it. It seems something uh, I think everyone can enjoy. Yeah. I also want to talk about merch. You know, I've noticed in the past you've done some merch. Uh, you've got a great T-shirt that's uh, a man and his best friend. And I think it's called the Untour. Yeah. Twenty twenty. Yeah, and it's the Pinto Heads Guide to. Um, I can't remember. It was. The, it's my friend and who's a great artist, Daryl Norson. Like um, that was just his. I didn't say like make art with Pinto. He just sort of mentioned like, can I do something with like this? He had found this kind of again because Pinto just sort of looks like such a general cartoon dog. I think he had found this like clip art cartoon dog that looked right. vaguely like Pinto, and uh, decided to just make a whole you know again like a deep nod to the to Pinto's presence. So it really is like a tour poster slash Pinto post or something to right. combining my two. Uh, primary Instagram <laughs> styles, <laughs> right? And also the hat, the pup hat. Is that a is that a good is that selling well? Or um, did that sell well I back? Sold, in... sold pretty well. Yeah, yeah. And again, that was also a Daryl. That was all just Daryl's idea to like, hey, let's just put let's put Pinto on some merch. So, and I was like, yeah. Sure. <laughs> no, love to see that. We see that a lot with a lot of the guests I talk to, and it's, it's always welcomed. Do you take the proceeds, and does that? go into dog treats or, or dog toys. Um, he doesn't, play to be with, fair, he doesn't play with dog toys anymore, Okay, which is, that's just his, his age. He's at that age. Yeah. He used to like, he's like matured out of dog toys. Like, uh, but oh yeah, he gets very print. He gets, and he has some, uh, some stomach issues. So, he, and he's picky about food anyway, but so he gets some very primo treats though, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, does he have any, you know, is there a story you repeat of, of the whole time you've had him? Is there any story of having to go to the vet or destroying a piece of furniture or does, does he have a, does he have a highlight that he tends to come to your mind? He's never destroyed anything. Um, not, not a destructive dog. So it's like, yeah, some of the things you hear about dogs was like bad in the car or like rips things up, like just never has done that. He, he's been going to the vet a little bit more lately just because he's an older guy. He has pancreatitis. He has an adrenal <laughs> issue. Like, yeah, he has just all kinds of like old man stuff, but it's, it's right now it's all manageable. So it's not like, you know, the, the uh, type of, it's more just like he definitely, he's a guy that takes like multiple pills per day. So right. he loves because <laughs> it gets, to, it gets, we have to put it in cheese. So it's sort of, his, and he's, he's, already into the routine of the cheese and he's like it's cheese time so yeah oh, that's good that's yeah my dog oh god I, I went through this spell of having to give him pills and it would be you know hide it in the food and then you'd see the pill later on somewhere on his dog bed or in his bowl I'm like oh, yeah. how did you he was <laughs> he was a he was an absolute artist with that at first and i think he's he's become accustomed to it now and he, he definitely takes the pill now um, now being a dog guy, do you exhibit any behavior that would make a non dog person roll their eyes? Um, yeah, I mean, it's like when you, especially when you're at home and you're speaking to your dog and the voice that you speak to your dog in, which is, I think a very private thing, <laughs> right? Well, and we're going to get to that. <laughs> we're not, and I'm, I will not do it for the public. It's, a, it's, it's <laughs> private. Um, but like, uh, yeah, like just when you're, when you're sort of in that zone and you're just like talking to him and you're, you know, uh, making up songs about him and, and, uh, and 
it's yeah, the ridiculousness of that sort of intimate time with your dog is always like when you actually think about it, if there was a camera in the house, you'd be like, Oh my God, but um, totally worth it too. Cause you know, they're the best. Yeah. Now as a dog guy, are you ever, you know, singing the praises to someone else to get a dog? I know it's a personal choice, but are you ever like, Oh, it's the best thing. You know, do you ever, again, the wrong word, push it on somebody, but do you ever promote it to anybody? Um, not really. Like, I don't know if someone was like, said something like we're considering getting a dog i'd be like you should they're great but i'm i'm not i no, i'm not an evangelist for uh for dog ownership um other than big promoter of rescuing adults and and especially mixed breed dogs and um mm -hmm. you know there's just so many dogs out there so um but other than that no i, I wouldn't i'm not uh telling non-dog people it's like you gotta try it man it's like whatever <laughs> yeah 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 now, how would you describe a good day for Pinto? I think a good day is for him to feel be feeling frisky um, as an old guy. Like he's he's got sort of slow days and frisky days, and he loves a, a frisky walk down. We live sort of down near a cool, busy street with lots of cafes and bars and restaurants and stuff. And he he loves that, like sort of because he gets to walk by other dogs and there's people sitting at the cafes and they, they pet him and stuff. And he like, he loves, he just loves like attention from, mm -hmm. from, from people. Um, right. There's little kids and stuff too. He loves little kids. Like it's just sort of like a bustling city street. And that's, that's his favorite is to have a, a frisky walk day and, and want to walk down, down the, the street and get, get pet by people at cafes and stuff like that. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Now, I don't know how close you are to the beach, but has he ever been to the beach or does he like the beach? Well, he's from the beach. Um, and uh, like he, we literally rescued him from the beach. He's has like mixed feelings about the beach, which I think there might be some kind of past right. something, you know, he was like a beach, literally a wild beach dog when we got him. He likes the beach, but he's timid of the ocean. Um, he's not like a swimmer mm -hmm. and, uh, we live uh, uh, on the east side of LA, so so sort of with traffic pretty far <laughs> from the beach. But but yeah, right. yeah, we, we'll take him every now and again. Like he enjoys it. He likes running around in the sand and stuff. But yeah, okay. And if we put him on the mic and asked him about you, what would he? How would he sum you up? I'm his second favorite person besides my wife. Uh, oh, okay. Is that is that a pretty cut and dry? One hundred percent. Yeah, which is fine. And it's like, he likes all people so much too. So, but she's his, she's his imprinted uh, person. Okay. And uh, I, I should have mentioned this earlier, but part of the um, article that was in talkhouse.com, you just mentioned um, that a trainer had said that he had Darwinian survivalist, you know, instincts. I guess, I guess the two part question, one was how so, and two was, just about the trainer. Did you guys get a trainer for him in the early stages? Just get him acclimated to domestic living. Yeah, the trainer was great too, and it was private. It was private lessons. And what she said, the Darwinian thing she said was, um, because we were, she had worked with street dogs before. He was a completely wild dog before we got him. He, he was not. He was wild. Like he wasn't like an abandoned dog or something. There's just these packs of dogs, you know, and they're born in in nature. So, um, he. He is a hunter naturally and does still sometimes we have to, if he's finds a rodent out, he has four certified kills that I know of. <laughs> um, one of which I had to finish off, which sucked uh, having to bludgeon a rat to death with a shovel. Um, but yeah, if he comes across a rodent and can get it into his mouth, he will do it. And she was like, he probably had to eat wildlife, you know? So we, we, yeah. we got her to, help with his crazy prey drive with squirrels and stuff too. He would go crazy and which he doesn't do anymore. But she said those street dogs, she's like, we were like, he's so great though too. And and she's like, yeah, the street dogs are actually um, the best because the, they learn, you know, through evolution that people are cool. And if you're nice, they'll help you. So he, it, she said that she referred to it as survival of the nicest. So she's like the really nice ones get rescued and they're, they're literally like appreciative and they're like, I'm going to continue to be nice. So we had two sessions with her and she said, um, we're done. She's like, this is a good dog. So wow. kind of gave us like some leash training, some stuff to work with, with the squirrel stuff, which completely worked. And he's just like, yeah, he was like, before he would jump the fence in the backyard, and just leave. <laughs> Cause he's like, what? <laughs> he's like, that's why, why wouldn't I just go somewhere else? 
um, but then, yeah, they call it, uh, the trainer calls it a buy-in, you know, like they have to buy in to be like, oh yeah, this is like, I have a home now. Yeah. I got a steady meal and I don't have to yeah. hustle, hustle for a kibble. I don't have to hustle and, uh, or for like scraps or garbage or whatever. So, but yeah. yeah, it's very weird. He's also not strongly food driven either though. Not like a real food beggar. Like he, he does. Like if you're eating something really awesome, he'll. They'll let you know, but he doesn't like jump up on you and try to get it. He's never jumped up on a table and gotten food. You could leave yeah. like a turkey sandwich on the coffee table right in front of his face and go get a drink from the kitchen and come back. And he's just like staring at it like five days a day, but he wouldn't take it. He's, he's very, very polite. Okay. Now I seem to remember a post where he nabbed a piece of pizza. Does that ring any bells? Yeah, he has done that. This is, and it's it's actually like he does it so infrequently that it's notable. Like when he does, like he, he right. couldn't, he couldn't, it, he must have just not been able to handle it. That, that's like <laughs> maybe once or twice he's done it. But for the most part, it's like, yeah, he loves pizza, okay. which is like, who doesn't? Yeah, exactly. It was, that's, that my, was going to be my reaction. Yeah. Well, I end every show with what I call the Zoomies, and that's just five quick questions. Yeah. So let's uh, go there. The first one is, do you kiss Pinto on the mouth? I do, yes. Okay, I think I've seen photographic uh, evidence that's, confirming that's that. That's probably the picture I'm going to send you to use is there's one of me and him like touching noses from, from a while back. That, that's kind That'd of be a, great. It's a cute picture. That'd be great. Yeah. That'd be good. good episode graphic. Yeah. Question two, this is just looking for shameless name dropping. Um, has he licked anyone famous or anyone in, in your business? I mean, definitely. I think, I mean, at least famous on my level of famousness, which is just like, you know, somewhat medium notable indie rock people. But he, uh, I, I do have one story where um, he, he got two times walking in LA, he got pet by Joaquin Phoenix or one time by Joaquin Phoenix and one time by uh Timothy Chalamet just like <laughs> randomly like and kind of how stranger it was like in a park setting or something right how that happens with stranger I wasn't there but it happened my with my wife walking with them I don't think he licked them though but okay yeah. all right but that's good those are good good yeah. good names I haven't heard yeah before. very very a-list too so yeah <laughs> Question three, if you can give him a theme song, what would it be? Whether it kind of sums up who he is or if there's kind of a song that was popular that reminds you of him when kind of he came into your life. I'm trying to think because I've, we've made up so many Pinto songs, like so many songs like where you're just like hearing a song and then to ch change the lyrics to Pinto yeah. related lyrics. Wow, if I'd have if I'd have had time to actually think about this, I could, could have told you like 10 things, but I'm, I'm, okay. I'm blanking. Okay, you're not the first one to do that. And I think I'm gonna to have to give that one in advance. I, uh, I I give a couple in advance. Question four, you alluded to this already, but I ask if you use a dog voice uh, to speak to the dog or do you give the dog his own voice? Both. <laughs> um, okay, and I know you're not gonna share, but can you describe kind of the character you're using or the tone you're using? One, one the Pinto voice is extreme. We, we always say the Pinto's mildly concerned at all times as a joke, like, cause he's, he has a very like sort of a serious face. And yes. so, um, the, his, his voice is like, uh, it's like a, a person asking lots of questions and just being like, Hey, so are there, are there going to be treats available? Maybe is, <laughs> is it possible that I could get like, he's always sort of concerned and sort of just like, just, uh, um, which I think is like, Sort of all dogs are are always in a yeah. slight state of kind of like, hey, can I ask you a few things? So yeah, he's it's a it's a guy who's asking lots of questions about like whether pizza crusts are uh, available to eat after we eat the pizza. Or, yeah, yeah, I love it. But it's funny. I wish I had my notes. Somebody just gave that a very similar answer. He had a very ra the dog was very rational and even keeled and um, you know exactly the way you explained. So it's pretty much how Pito very, probably would be if he. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, is there a dog organization, a charity, a walker, a groomer, anybody out there who's helping that you just want to give a shout out to? Yeah. And I don't know if anyone has before, but Mutt Scouts in L.A. is a good uh, organization that that really specializes in um, like abused, neglected and abandoned dogs, mm -hmm. uh, like adult dogs and, and street dogs and stuff. And and uh, sort of the ones that are really having a rough 
shake of it. So um, they're, a, they're a great follow on Instagram and a tough one sometimes too, because you write stuff that really breaks your heart. So, but, but I think it's sometimes good to have your heart broken and then you go like, I got to go get that dog. Yeah, got to so, act. Um, and then my sister-in-law um, has a, an old friend that runs an organization called Baja Street Dogs. It's BajaStreetDogs.org. And that's just like dogs in Baja. So I figured I'd shout them out because- Definitely. Yeah. Great. Two we haven't heard before, so that'd be good to uh, uh, give some awareness to them, to our audience. So that's a two, two good ones. Thank you. Cool. So uh, with summer approaching, uh, any plans? I know you're involved in a couple of different things. Uh, what's what, what are your plans for this summer? Summer plans. Fruit bats are playing some a couple of couple of festivals, but not announceable yet. Um, right. Probably okay. will be by the time this comes out. But uh, Winnipeg Folk Festival that's announced. Yeah, and then Bonnie Light Horseman kind of has more stuff on the docket too. So yeah, just check both bands, and we'll be there'll be things posted. Okay, best best place to reach you guys, your social media and your websites. Yeah. yeah. Okay, fair enough. Well, Eric, thank you so much for taking the time to take me through Pinto's uh, life, and uh, it was it was great to get to know him. And uh, it sounds uh, I'm always appreciative to meet another dad guy who's as enthusiastic as I am. So thank you. Absolutely. This was a pleasure. I love I love talking about something that's not musical. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I love to hear that. And it's funny thing. I'm kind of a music nerd. And I'm, there's times where I'm dying to ask music questions. But I, I get a lot of uh, I get a lot of reactions like this. I think it, I think people appreciate taking a, a small break from, you know, talking shop. So yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. It's refreshing. Yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, it was my pleasure. Yeah, yeah. All right. See you okay. Now. Okay. Talk soon. Thank Bye. you. All right. Thanks again to Eric D. Johnson for sharing stories of his dog Pinto with us. The two organizations Eric chose to shine a spotlight on were Mutt Scouts, who are dedicated to helping homeless, abused, and abandoned dogs, and are committed to providing proper socialization, training, and medical care for each animal they save, no matter the cost. To adopt, foster, volunteer, or donate, go to muttscouts.org to learn more. The second was Baja Street Dogs, which is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to be of service to every dog in need. They host bi-monthly clinics to spay and neuter, provide all vaccines, as well as surgeries needed. To adopt, volunteer, or donate, visit BajaStreetDogs.org. All right, it's the time of the show to shower our listeners with praise, so just let me say thank you for listening and engaging with us. We've got another great episode lined up next week, featuring a Canadian artist who broke her foot chasing her dog as she prepared to play her first post-COVID show, so be sure to give that a listen. All right, that's all we got for you this week. Take care of those dogs. We'll see you next week. Thank you.